The first time I stood on hot asphalt and breathed diesel smoke and french fry grease, I was wearing torn cutoffs and an extra large George Thorogood and the Destroyers t-shirt. And even though I knew better, I was flirting with a rhythm guitar player over the rim of a styrofoam cup on our last pit stop just before rolling into Nashville. I was one of three backup singers on Cindy Lou Bender's Magnolia Heart Tour, living the lyrics to all my favorite road songs. Each night I got dressed up, stood on stage with my best girlfriends, Kathleen and Amy, and sang gentle oohs and ahs behind America's biggest country music star, backed by a kick-ass band and the world's best road crew. I, it's, it's very dark, I can't remember. Um, I've been on the road for almost a year, a proud and seasoned warrior, and I was smart enough to know that there was absolutely nothing wrong with my life. The hotel bar was closed by the time we got back from the show, and everyone ended up in my room, ready for a party. Pretty soon, there were at least 15 sweaty band members and crew members sprawled over the bed, the chairs on the floor. Sacks of fast food takeout and a couple of bottles appeared, and it, it's the truth that wild turkey on ice from the machine down the hall in a hotel bathroom glass will make you a very special kind of stupid. <laughs> uh, soon we were strumming guitars, making up dumb song lyrics, and howling at the moon outside my fifth floor window. Drink your H2O, honey. We don't want to get all puffy. Kathleen held out a glass of water, our preferred method of hangover prevention. Thanks. I was drunk enough to wonder if I'd sounded sincere. Say, she asked slyly, what do you think about the new rhythm guitar player? Seems like a good picker, why do you ask? It was unusual for her to ask my opinion before telling me hers. Well, he sure seems to be picking you, she said with a wink. Oh, come on. Bobby Lee hasn't taken his eyes off you all night long. Kath, I think you're out of your mind. Girlfriend, you must be the only one who hasn't noticed. The boy's got a big old crush on you. I felt my cheeks turning pink. Don't be ridiculous. Bobby Lee is nice to everyone. Look at you, you're blushing. I think maybe you have a teensy little crush on him too, she said, and sauntered off with a glass of water for Amy. It sounds dumb, but that was all I needed to hear. I suddenly couldn't take my eyes off him, Bobby Lee Crenshaw, the new guitar guy. But it seemed crucial to get to Amy before Kathleen did and started a rumor that would spread through the band like wildfire. I sprinted across the room, nearly tripping over my bass player and found Amy pulling things out of a greasy paper bag. Eat your vegetables, honey. She offered a fried onion ring. The closest thing to a vegetable I'd seen in weeks. Uh, no thanks. Oh, come on, you need your fiber. Hey, Kat says you and the new guitar player are madly in love with each other and too stupid to realize it. Her mischievous smile glistened with smudged lipstick and onion ring grease. Well, we're not. At least I'm not, I said. You know, he's cute and nice and talented and everything. But even if I were, I wouldn't, you know, because of my rule. I thought that was a good enough explanation for the moment. You, you see, I had a rule about not getting involved with members of the band. And except for a couple of lapses early in my undistinguished career, I pretty much stuck to that rule. Um, it had been a long time since I'd had any kind of a boyfriend, even a stupid one-night stand, and I didn't think about it much. Being on the road was almost enough to keep me completely happy. But every now and then, as I saw the others pick up messages from home, or reconnect with lovers in different cities, or sometimes both, <laughs> I wondered if I was missing out on some sort of really wild, adventurous, sex, rock and roll life I was supposed to be having. Bobby Lee suddenly looked so good to me he was practically glowing. Some internal adolescent radar magnet in my brain was conscious of his whereabouts in the room every second. There he was, courteously handing a beer to Buddy's girlfriend and laughing at one of Lester's stupid jokes. I couldn't pay attention to what Kathleen was saying to me. I was too busy tracking his movements 
And when he dashed across the hall to get his guitar, I, I stopped breathing until he came back. He casually draped his arm around Linda, the wardrobe lady's shoulder, and, and I quietly decided to have her killed. <laughs> and, and someone put one of my country compilation tapes on the boombox. He kicked off his shoes and with exaggerated politeness walked over and asked me to dance. We'd come directly from the show without a chance to shower, and his clothes and skin had absorbed the backstage smell of old beer, stale sweat, burnt electrical wiring, an aroma I suddenly found intoxicating. I felt that tingly buzz touching his hand. So far gone, I could barely look at him, afraid of giving myself away. And I realized I was going to have to be really careful. Either that or I was in for the adventure of a lifetime. How it played out seemed to be up to me. Thank you.